Let's do some elegant and timeless makeup together. For the skin, I'm going to do something special here, starting with this foundation. I'm actually not able to pump this anymore because there's hardly any in it. I just take the lid off and use one of my favorite tools. I was watching all of these different K-beauty makeup artists, and they often use this tool, which is a stainless steel spatula for makeup. This video is brought to you by Booksy. Booksy is an all-in-one scheduling app. It actually is the number one booking marketplace for beauty professionals in the world. Whether you're a makeup artist, nail technician, or you do wellness services, there are so many features in Booksy's app that will streamline your administration process, preventing no-shows and helping you keep and build a loyal clientele with features like keeping notes on your appointments so that you're well prepared to remember something that they mentioned or that you need to know for their next appointment. One thing I love is in the app, they have provided images, quotes, and you can directly market your business and attract new clients so that you have more going on in your business with a lot more time saved. Let Booksy do the work for you while you get to relax a little bit more. Check out the link in the description to discover Booksy for yourself. Now, using this tool, you can pick up some of the pigment and the product and spread it really smoothly across your skin, gliding it so smooth that it's almost blended. Of course, your technique gets better the more that you do it. I'm brand new to this, but I'll tell you when I use my sponge, it takes a lot less to blend it into my skin. This foundation is going to go around the eyebrows, also underneath the eyes and down, but I'm not going to use it on my forehead. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Filter that has hardly any actual pigment in it, but more of a glow and a sheer filter like the name suggests. And I'm going to put this on my forehead and on my cheeks to add luminosity. I'm using a NYX eyebrow pencil and I put my eyebrows on and now we're going to move on to concealing. I really enjoy using this kind of brush. This is a small flat concealer brush allowing you to place the concealer down really nicely. I like using this for that reason because you can be precise with it and smooth it just like with the spatula. Any place that I don't really mind if I lose some coverage, that's where I blend first. So I take my sponge and I press it into the skin not trying to move it around, just pressing it in until it disappears. Where do I want the most coverage? That's right underneath my eyes because there's pigment I want to cover and I want it to look really smooth in that area. By blending the outer third area of the eye, I get it really smooth, leaving the inner part to set and dry down just a little bit before I take my sponge and press it in underneath and over top of the eye. The under eye is really the only area, that direct little part under the eye, where I really don't want my concealer to really blend in with the skin. I want it to lay on top so that it smooths out the texture and makes the makeup look flawless. Now look at this. I'm using an angled stippling brush. These are interesting because they are double packed bristles at the base and then the longer ones are only half packed, if you will, and that gives you a control with the brush but a softness with the tip and that control allows you to place it really well but the softness of the tip is what is going to give such an effortless blend. I'm taking that bronzer putty and just pressing it into my skin it blends within seconds. Now the creams are set on my skin and it's time to add powder. I'm mixing two powders together and using a velour puff. These are both from the drugstore. Mixing two shades together, I'm going to get a lightness that brightens underneath the eye, but something that's not so, so powdery that it looks white cast. A little under the eyes, on the chin, and in the middle of the forehead so that the makeup doesn't get oily in these areas. And then adding some more dimension. I don't have the lid for this anymore, but I still love it so much. This is going to add a little bit of a gray cast, a little bronze that's not too summery looking. Dimensionality that goes hand in hand with that cream bronzer that I used earlier. When I look at my eyes, one of them is more deep set, one of them is bigger, and the other one is smaller and less deep set, so that means that they are different. And I like to add a little powder first before I start my makeup, just to try and even them out a little. 
that contour powder went right in the one socket of my eye and not in the other, but I'm going to add something to both, of course. So now we're on to the eye makeup itself using an earthy shade of taupe. This is a really easy to use cream shadow that can go with a blending brush or your finger, and you can smooth this as a sheer wash of color over your eyes, which is a very elegant look because it is so natural, it's almost undetectable. Using a flat eyeshadow brush, this is one of my favorite tools for the eyes. You can take this up along the lash line and if you use it on an upward angle, so pushing it up towards the lash line, you can control how thick the line is. And for that smaller eye, I'm doing a much less thick line, pushing the shadow in so carefully and checking so that more of the eyelid will show on that eye, evening them out slightly. And then I loaded up that same brush with some black liner and I'm going to layer it over top. Getting a great quality lash curler is a key and something you should have for years and years. This one is by Shiseido and it's very good. I love false lashes, but first I always apply mascara and I hold the brush on the lash, wiggling it a little bit every few seconds before I release it and blink my eye down. Doing this gives a really flush amount of mascara that looks natural and doesn't clump up so I like it for a look like this. Before I add false lashes, I'll take that same brush and whatever is left over from that eyeliner, I'm going to press it along the lash line to give some definition. There's one specific style of eyelash that I have loved ever since I tried them first and it doesn't really matter what brand you use but it's the style it's this L-shape effect that is very specific. They really flush out to the edges, almost like a winged liner, placing them to the middle of my eye and adjusting the end. Once it's secured, then I'll go and fine tune the inner corner. I have a really specific method when I do these and that is it essentially. But if you want to see exactly how you can get this right every single time, I can make a video if you're interested. Just give this a thumbs up or leave a comment below. I'll know that you're interested. So now we will finish the look with lips. And I tried this on and it was too coral and too pigmented. I'm going to wash it away with some more lip liner and then I'll take whatever concealer is left on that sponge and press it over top of the lips to mute them a little bit. I use this lip balm a lot and it has a sheer wash of pink in it and it just glows really naturally. I'm going to finish this look with some blush. This one's by Maybelline and it's a soft true pink. It is so beautiful. And here is this simple, elegant makeup look. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And thank you to Booksy for sponsoring this makeup tutorial. Click the link in the description to check them out and see all of the products that were used in this video. See you soon.